The NHL Draft is single-handedly the most important day for every NHL team because building a roster through the draft is the best recipe for success as it is not a coincidence that 9, count it, 9 out of the Tampa Bay Lightning's top 10 scores this season was drafted by Tampa as growing and developing your own talent not only heavily influences depth and synergy but it leads to better contracts thus more money to spend on supplementary free agency pieces therefore it is crucial that if a team wants to see sustainable success that your team lands building block pieces through the draft yet it is not that easy in fact it is a near impossible task because projecting how a teenager will develop by the time they are 25 is the hardest problem in all of professional sports and every once in a while instead of going for that consensus player with their pick we see a team go off the board where in some cases teams have used a top 10 pick on a player who was ranked in the third round potentially passing on a star going for a player that perhaps they know more about than other nhl teams which has either turned out to be a genius 500 iq move or completely blown up in their face which brings us to our first story i don't know what is in the water in winnipeg but they have a crazy history of going far off the board because whether it was selecting mark shifley seventh overall when some scouts had him as a second if not third round pick or perhaps drafting blake wheeler fifth overall when he was a consensus second if not third round pick and although these two players turned out to be stars meaning i guess they did know something success hasn't always been the case because back in 1992 the winnipeg jets would set an nhl record as they would draft a 25 year old sergey botton with the 17th overall pick absurd they dig the puck out loose from side of the net it ricochets out to sergey b10 and he scores and the jets lead three two which begs the question you probably could have picked him with the last pick in the draft as analysts were stunned by this off the board pick i mean he literally wasn't even on the board in the first place as the commentators had zero notes to reference they even mistakenly thought they drafted someone else went on to reading facts about that guy okay but how did he turn out sergey would enter the nhl as a now 26 year old rookie have an okay rookie season have a disaster sophomore season where he would then be traded to the red wings where he would go on to spend the rest of his north american career in the minors including the minors of the minors thus he would pack up his bags and play in sweden and go as far as japan now for a more recent case and potentially just as catastrophic because after a slam dunk 2020 draft for the ottawa senators selecting names such as tim stutzla at number three jake sanderson at number five and after being a bottom team as expected the ottawa senators would end up with the 10th overall pick and another great chance to draft a foundational piece for their already existing stellar young core but in a classic ottawa senators fashion they would go completely off the board and draft tyler boucher at number 10. a physical winger with scoring upside so perhaps you know a brady kachuk 2.0 senators boucher scores over the right shoulder of aiden spooner 2-0 ottawa however what was mind-boggling about this selection is that many teams many top scouting agencies had boucher not even as a late first round pick not even in the second round but they labeled boucher as a third round pick so to go about you know 80 picks off the board was unfathomable but okay it is also important to keep in mind that this draft contained prospects who had to face massive adversity due of course to the pandemic as many prospects including tyler boucher would miss many games because of it as boucher would only play 21 games that season so if you think drafting is hard imagine now drafting a player who had two-thirds of a season erased but okay maybe ottawa knew something that other teams didn't so what happened the next season after being committed to boston university boucher would make his debut this season where it would be a complete disaster as boucher would have an extremely tough time adjusting to higher competition where he would put up a grand total 
of 3 points in 17 games. And after knowing this was not a good situation, Tyler Boucher would leave Boston in the NCAA and sign a contract with the Ottawa 67s of the OHL, where hopefully he would turn it around. Except, it would be a complete disaster once again. In a situation where top picks have gone on to putting up disgusting draft plus one years, with most of them putting up easily north of 100 points, Tyler Boucher had 14 points in 24 games. Why, Ottawa? Why do this to yourself? And don't get me wrong, this is not supposed to be a slight against Boucher, as I do hope he turns it around and makes an NHL roster one day. Because regardless of whether he was a first or third round pick, Tyler was still one of the top prospects in the world. And so this is a criticism against the teams who take that risk. Because if he was rated for the second, if not third round, how? How do you not trade down in the draft? Like, this wasn't just a late first round pick, this was a damn top 10 pick. After assembling, arguably the greatest dynasty in NHL history, Steve Eisman with balls of steel would abruptly resign right before back-to-back -back Stanley Cup wins as he was focused on returning back to the motherland, Detroit. And after taking over, and let's be honest here, a horrible Red Wings team, Steve Eisman had a massive first task of drafting a new staple with the sixth overall pick in the 2019 NHL draft, where Eisman would shock the draft floor taking Marit Sider with the sixth overall pick. But you did not see this coming either way. No, not at all. And, but this one's a little bit of a shocker. It really is. I won't lie to you, Bob. I think you're a little bit surprised by this. Who was ranked in the 15 to 20 range, if not late in the first? As again, he would have the balls to pass on other highly sought upon prospects, such as Trevor Zegras, Matthew Boldy, and Phil Broberg who was across the board, ranked higher as a defenseman than Sider. And this pick had many analysts and a lot of fans up in arms, as they thought Eiserman was a madman for taking a German defenseman this high after having an underwhelming season in the DEL with six points in 29 games. But the Eiser plan was right, as he would quickly prove all the haters wrong as Sider would have an exceptional first season in the AHL with 22 points in 49 games. More importantly though, showing his physical and defensive game. The next season he would sign in the SHL. This is where shit would pop off. Sider as a rookie would put up 28 points in 41 games and take home SHL Defenseman of the Year, which would lead into a spectacular rookie season because Moritz Sider is a fascinating player in a quickly changing modern game, where players like Adam Fox, Quinn Hughes, and especially Kale McCarr are reinventing the wheel on what it means to be a defenseman of when old school blends with the new school. Not only does he have a big shot, impressive puck skills Here's and passing Parker. ability. Freeman. Rebound, yes. scored! Looking for a rebound, they got a perfect bounce. You don't try to score when you shoot the puck like that. But this man can lay the boom. Oh, and Sider saw it coming wow. from Kreider, and he said, take this. And so after putting up 50 points and showing a complete 200-foot game, it was a no-brainer, even with a great rookie crop, that Sider was the best rookie, as he would take home the Calder, going from a mind-boggling off-the-board pick, winning SHL Defenseman of the Year, and claiming the illustrious Calder Trophy is one of those exciting defensemen of the future who will without a doubt compete against defensemen such as Kale McCarr for the Norse Trophy year after year which only adds more of a reason to think that Stevie Y Steve Eiserman is a goddamn genius